Hello everyone, welcome back to the YouTube channel Programming Knowledge. In today's Microsoft Excel VBA video, we are going to continue our discussion which we started from the previous video on the dates in Microsoft Excel. So in the previous video, we saw that how can we actually uh, generate dates in Microsoft Excel? How can we convert the date from any format to a format that Microsoft Excel understands? And how can we add anything to a date in Microsoft Excel using the VBA macros? In today's video, we are going to understand the usage of the date part function uh, that is uh, actually used to separate the days, month and year from a given date. Also, we are going to see the different methods through which you can do that. One is the date part function and there is another method through which we can work on it. And then we are also going to see uh, about the time function. That is how can we get the current time uh, in Microsoft Excel. So let's start with the video. The first thing is uh, we are going to read about the date part function. So let's just uh, start with it. This is the uh, piece of code that um, I wrote from the previous video. So let's just comment it out. Go to the edit tab and go to this comment block. So it would be commented out. Let's just comment this all. And let's now uh, add up our new code from here. So for the date part function, what does this date part function do? It can separate the year from the given date, separate the month and separate the date. Also on the basis of the given date, it would tell you that um, what quarter it is right now. So let's see an example. Uh, let's just create a variable, say dim c as variant. And this would be used to store a date. Now, right now what we have done, uh, we have not entered any date like uh, here we entered a date but we use the cdate function to convert it into a format that Microsoft Excel understands but right now what we are going to do is actually uh, give it the date value ourselves without the cdate function so how can you do that as you know whenever you are trying to store any textual value or any string then you need to use the double quotes similarly if you are trying to store any of the dates value then you need to use the hash sign or the pound sign so these double pounds is where uh, you um, between these double pounds is where you want your date to be stored so whatever date it is you got to store within these double pounds okay so once you've written this let's just uh, give it a date that is 12 31 and 2020 that is 31st december 2020 uh, and the format is mm slash dd slash yy yy okay now once you've given that uh let's just uh, actually print it once so that we are sure that it is accepting the correct format and uh, we are printing this value of c using a message box so let's just run it and you can see we are getting the correct date so that's how it works okay now let's just remove this piece of code because we do not need it anymore then let's use the date part function so whatever the result of this date part function is we want to store it in a message box or show it in the form of a message box that's why we are in message box then put a space and then write date part like this and open and close the parentheses. Now within these parentheses, we have got these different things. First of these things is the interval as a string. Now this interval is the same interval as we looked at the date add function that was y, 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 m and d. So this uh, is actually going to accept the same formatting. That is if we are trying to extract the year. First of all, we are going to uh, extract the year. So for that, we have to specify four y's and then put a comma. Next thing it expects from us is a date so our date is stored in a variable called c so let's just type in c and rest of the things are optional so we are not going to uh, actually study it in that detail and these two arguments are sufficient for us so when this piece of code is executed from the c part the year would be extracted that is we are expecting 2020 to be the output over here so let's just copy and do it for the months and the days as well and uh, one more time for the quarter so for the month we know we have to type a single m for the days we know we have to type a single d and for the quarter we got to type a single q 
so the quarters you can see uh, it would be giving the four as the answer that's the fourth quarter so that's how this works this date part function works and let's just check it out so let's just uh, use this run so first of all we get 2020 as the output that is for this first line of code that is it has extracted the year then it gives 12 which is the month then it gives 31 which is the day and then it gives 4 which is the quarter okay now if you want to cross check it you can just change the month value say 3 uh, and now let's check the value of quarter 2020 3 31 and one is the quarter so that's how it works that's how the date part function works to extract up all these things okay now there is another method through which uh, you can extract the days months and years and that is actually pretty simple you do not need to use the date part function so for that method what we are going to do is first of all let's just comment out this whole block and then what we are going to do is actually show the result again in the form of a message box then what you got to write is a simple day function day day is the name of a function and within the within the parenthesis you need to specify the date so our date is stored in a variable c now what this day function will do as the name suggests it will extract the day from the given date that is it would give 31 as the answer so that's for extracting the day and uh, if you just paste it two more times then we have got the functions for month and year as well so if you want to extract month m-o-n-t-h month is the name of the function and if you want to extract the year y-e-a-r year is the name of the function so these are the three functions that uh, could be used instead of the date part function as well and they do the same thing so let's run it so first of all we have got the day that is 31st because of this day function then we are getting 3 because uh, our month was 3 through this month function and then we got the year as uh, 2020 because of this year function so that's how you can actually uh, change the days or um, actually uh, split the date using the two methods whether the date part function or the day month year function and um, that was uh, about the dates so let's just comment it out again now we are uh, going to talk about the time like uh, we saw that how using this date function we got the current date so if we talk about time so how can we get the current time of the system in microsoft excel so for that let us go to the insert tab and insert a new module and this time i'm going to rename it as time funks that means time functions that's for the shortcut and let's create a sub procedure that is time funks sub procedure and um, <coughs> excuse me in this sub procedure we are going to actually display the current time so uh, when you want to display the current time there are actually two methods for it okay uh, so uh, one method is the function called as now uh, if you just write it in message box and simply you write now n o w and open and close the parentheses so now is a function that will display the current date and time which means both the date and the time would be displayed and then uh, we know we can extract the date from it and all those things but if you only want to display the time then what you can do is simply write a function uh, that is given to us is known as time 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 and then open and close the parenthesis so using the now function you will get date and time while using the simple time function you will only get uh, to know the current time so that's it let's just run it and see what happens so first of all we are getting this um, output that's the current date and current time because of this now function now we click on OK and this is the second message box in which we are getting the current time because of this time function. So that's how you can get the time. And um, as we saw uh, in the case of dates, we can also extract the time, uh, which means that um, if you want to split it in the form of hours, minutes and seconds, then uh, we can do that with time as well. 
so this is what we are going to see in the next video where we will be working about time and understanding more and more about time that how can we work with time in microsoft excel how can we split the time into hours minutes and seconds and also we are going to see two important functions of time that is time serial and the time value functions so that is all for the to, uh, for today's video in uh, which we learned about the date functions and uh, thanks for watching